Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Devdatta Bandapadhyay. I am not a medicine doctor, I am a doctorate and uh, my field of specialization is molecular biology and cell biology. Presently I am working in a pharmaceutical company in India. Couple of days ago, I found a very nice article in the New York Times which was published in April 3rd this year and I thought that it will be a good idea to give some uh, idea about the coronavirus genome especially in this coronavirus environment that we are passing through uh, to give some idea about the coronavirus genome and what are the proteins that are expressed from this genome what does the protein do what do all the proteins do in the cell uh, this is mostly targeted for the people who are not very much into the biology field so I will try to explain it in as much as possible in layman's language so that people who are not in biology field can understand uh, get, get a basic idea so now we'll come to the first thing how the genome looks like the genome is about 30,000 letters long what are the letters we know if we remember our um, school level biology that our in human genome that is the DNA is made up of four type of nucleotide adenine guanine cytosine and thymine in SARS coronavirus genome the whole genome is made up of RNA ribonucleic acid the difference between DNA and RNA is that there is no thymidine in RNA instead of thymidine it has a uracil base so that means they have A for adenine G for guanine C for cytosine and U for uracil now then this genome gets translated that means from this RNA the virus makes these proteins this big proteins and from that big protein there are small proteins are made now you will see the line ORF1 what is ORF1 ORF stands for open reading frame in my next slide I will give a very brief background on what is ORF see this is the RNA as I said it has A G C and U and no T which stands for thymidine now when this segment is translated into a protein what are proteins? Proteins are a chain of amino acids put together. The first protein, first amino acid, it comes from here, which is AUG, almost invariably always. Uh, it stands for methionine. So the, the translation, the protein making machinery recognizes the whole genome three bases at a time. They are called codon, three bases at a time. And for each three bases, cell has the machinery to assign a particular amino acid for AUG it is methionine for CUU it's leucine for AUU it's isoleucine these names are just for different amino acids UCG is for serine and so on so on so on then say there is a AAG which codes for lysine there is a GCU that codes for alanine and this machinery goes on synthesizing this and joining these amino acids together not synthesizing joining these amino acids together until it hits any of these three letter three letter combination any of these three three letter combination UGA or UAA or UAG whenever it hits this it assigns that you need to stop here so from here to here I have a big protein which is called the open reading frame as the name as the, as the process suggests open reading frame now let's go back to our main chapter so this is one open reading frame and from this there are lots of non-structural proteins come how come this is one protein no this one protein after synthesizing this big protein it gets chopped up to several small molecules of proteins which are like 16 proteins are uh, created from this one big protein then there is some structural proteins and in between there are some accessories proteins so what do these proteins do I will just go quickly through that first one which is this part non-structural protein one this protein is actually a saboteur protein it hijacks our cells machinery and that machinery is used to make more virus proteins so that way it's a sabo it's a saboteur protein which because it hijacks the whole cell machinery it's called NSP1 
The second one, NSP2 is a mystery protein. Scientists are not sure what NSP2 does. But it attaches to some other proteins and all of them together, they form a bubble on wh in which the virus particle reside. Now, NSP3. NSP3 is called a tagging, untagging and cutting protein. It does two main primary jobs. The first one is the big virus protein can be chopped up into small proteins so that they are now as separate protein entities. Secondly, secondly, what, do it, what does it do is that our normal healthy cells, there is always a half-life of a protein. A protein is not eternally living. After synthesizing the protein, the protein does its job and each protein has a separate half-life. After all, after that, the protein gets degraded. So, this protein actually removes some kind of signal from our protein so that our proteins are not degraded. They are not degraded when they are supposed to. That way the cellular health is jeopardized. And the structure you can see, these structures are actually molecular simulated. So the molecule, there are lots of molecular softwares, protein softwares, which takes into account the structure of each of those amino acids and put them together and find out how do they look like. So this is something what they should look like as the computer prediction. Okay. Let's go to the fourth protein, NSP4, which is the bubble maker. This bubble maker protein, they combine with some other proteins and make some bubbles. Inside those bubbles, new copies or viruses of this virus are made. Now protein scissors, as the name suggests, it's a scissor protein. That means it cuts a big protein. This protein makes cuts over here, maybe here, maybe here to make one two three four five all those proteins out of this big protein again nsp6 another bubble factory it works with nsp3 and nsp4 to make that virus factory bubbles nsp7 and nsp8 these two proteins along with nsp12 they starts making new copy of the rna of the virus which is the genome that means one virus when it in, uh, enters your cell it can create other copies of viruses virus by using these proteins these are called replication machinery nsp9 nsp9 what does it do is it makes tiny channels in the in our cells nucleus where our dna resides inside the cell so it also involves uh, influences the movement of some particles in and out of the nucleus but why that is not for sure people don't know genetic camouflage protein nsp10 it is a genetic camouflage protein that means once the virus inside the cell is degraded this protein this kills the virus rna and chops it into small part why that way those small parts can camouflage our can camouflage the virus's gene so that our body doesn't recognize that it's the virus gene and i need to act against it so it befools our immunity system so nsp10 is for that if we go to another copy machine nsp12 which is the dna replication machine rna replication machinery so one rna gene you know, uh, rna gets into our cell from one virus makes multiple copies using this nsp12 now in my first video where we have discussed about the clinical trial of several drugs this remdesivir is a very interesting drug which interferes with this replication machinery now trials are going on to see if this drug can treat covid 19. so nsp11 also another sequence which is here very small protein that overlaps with this nsp12 but this nsp11 a very small protein scientists don't know yet what is the exact function of nsp11 or it has any function at all nsp13 is called the unwinding rna unwinding rna what does it do normally our dna or any viral dna also they don't lie in the cell as a single stretch of string it is like a tangled thread ball or something pretty much tangled and it involves lots of twists and turns so nsp13 untie that tangles 
and makes it a straight line straight chain so that proteins can be formed from that and replication that means making new rna copies can be made from that single strand otherwise if the dna or rna is in a very um, twisted and kind of tangled form then other proteins cannot get access and replication or protein synthesis nothing can happen from that it has to be unwound proofreader that's a very interesting function in all, in our dna also when our dna is replicated to make a second copy of dna as the one cell gets two cells the numbers of the the, the a g c t those sequence has to be very faithfully copied into the new strand sometimes that doesn't happen there is one or two mismatches so that is called a error and this there are proteins which are called the proofreader so they go back one step chops out the wrong insert the, the nucleotide which one uh, wrongly inserted and puts a new right nucleotide replacing that wrong one so this is called a proofreading action mm. nsp14 does that proofreading action nsp15 this virus this protein chops up the leftover virus again again it is a um, hiding thing so it chops off the um, leftover virus dna rna and again it befools the antiviral defense system of our body because our body cannot recognize it anymore as it is a viral dna more camouflage again nsp16 nsp16 and nsp10 they work together to help the virus gene hide from the hide from the protein that chop off viral rna so virus gene is hidden by nsp16 nsp10 those proteins they are camouflaging proteins now coming to that structural protein here spike protein you have seen coronavirus uh, picture in lots of um, tv or magazine or newspaper and you have seen some nail like structure protruding out of the ball so those tail like structures are called the spike protein their function is to attach with the human cell when it gets inside the lungs so the spike protein has got some other accessory proteins which called em and n comes together they all form the outer layer of the coronavirus and it protects the rna inside so they help structural proteins also help assemble and release new copies of the virus so once the the viral cycle goes like that one virus att attack your attacks your cell it goes in releases its rna make multiple copies of the rna synthesize lots of proteins including these structural proteins also and they form the envelope once again make a complete virus bursts the cell and comes out now spike protein is something more to be added over here they form the spikes and as you have seen um, the spikes if you look from top and see only one sub one one section section of the virus it may look like a circle with some nails outside of that which looks like a crown this crown like spike gives the name coronavirus corona in latin means crown so coronavirus the name corona came from the crown like structure that the spikes actually give to the viruses uh, structure how does it attach to the cell this spike the this spike protein they attach to human cell using a protein called ace2 angiotensin converter enzyme the spike attaches with the ace this ace is from the human cell and this is from the viral cell so using computer computer simulation uh, scientists have created this model to understand how these two bind over here and if there is any drug possible to detach this binding or to disable the binding uh now there is an interesting thing is the gene for the spike protein in this particular coronavirus which is sars cov2 as opposed to other sars it has 12 genetic letters extra which was not there in other sars only in present in the sars cov2 so this is called a mutation this mutation helps the spike bind tightly to the human cell and this this binding is very important and a crucial step so this is a very interesting mutation which happened because the virus came from bats 
and then now it is affecting human so what are the change it needed it needed this change to adapt itself to human situation so that's a very nice example of adaptation there is one protein called what if 3a here accessory protein they are not structural protein they used they are used for a helping a big thing which is as i said before that once the virus is assembled inside the cell it makes a hole in the human cell and comes out from the human cell or its host host cells so coming out from that cell is called an escape and what if 3a they nicely named it as escape artist so this protein actually helps in making those pores by which the virus escapes the host cell and gets ready to attack the other surrounding cells envelope protein is another one what is the envelope as the name suggests it is the cover of the uh, virus so the spike is on the cover and the cover is made up of this e uh, protein another membrane protein is sorry another membrane protein is m which is also form the part of the outer coat signal blocker or f6 what is that this protein blocks the signal once the cell is infected our infected cells send out some signal to the immune system so that the immune system knows that this is the foreign particle and i have to kill it now this signal blocker they block this virus fighting proteins and that way our cells our body fails to understand that we have been attacked by a virus virus liberator when the new virus escapes the cell the cell can snare them with protein called tetherin once a virus is out our cell has also second line of defense called tetherin protein this tetherin protein again attacks those newly generated virus but what if 7 cuts the supply of tetherin so see and try to um, try to appreciate the nature's adaptation so the virus immediately formed some kind of system by which they came to know that tetherin protein is dangerous to them and we have to develop one protein which will disable tetherin protein so the warp 7 cuts down the supply of tetherin so the virus can escape 7b is also there but 7b people don't know why is 7b 7a 7b is here small protein but people don't know uh, what can it do what does it do another mystery protein is 8 this is also not known exactly what does it do and important point is this is also different in sars cov2 than in other corona viruses so it has something to do with adapting in human cell most likely but researchers are watching working on that and not clear yet nucleocapsid protein what is a nucleocapsid protein a uh, dna in our cell or rna in virus cell they cannot stay naked they have to be protected from outside attack of nuclear dna or rna degrading enzyme inside a protein shell so those proteins which covers the rna or dna called nucleocapsid protein so this uh, protein n they are nucleocapsid protein accessory protein 9b 9c they also overlap in the same region so it's a multiple protein forms from the same stage 9 b b the function is more or less defined it blocks interferon what is interferon interferon is a key molecule which kills viruses so whenever there is a viral attack influenza or whatever virus we immediately start synthesizing interferon but what if 9 b blocks interferon that way our interferon mechanism is inactivated then another mystery protein is warf10 which don't know what does it do a very thin protein but people don't know what does it do finally we are reaching to the end of the line the end of the line of the rna is always a lots of adenines put together so the end there is a chain so that is the end and it tells the machinery that okay that's the end of the rna you don't have to do anything now finally let me acknowledge the sources i this um, new york times review they collected data from nature animal review of virology journal of virology another nature paper and the whole document was published on april 3rd by jonathan karaman called zimmer in 
New York Times. Thanks for watching. I hope I could give you some basic idea about the coronavirus genome and its protein. Thank you.